will say, hey, Xiao Peng's pretty good. The rest of the team is uh, falling apart around his ears. So it does feel like Xiao Peng, he has to be the one to step on forward. We're into draft though here, Dan. And look at this. Carries taken off the board by TT. The Camille, the Akali, and now a Lulu removed. Is LNG getting rid of the Renekton and the Nocturne? Yeah, I actually really like the Lulu as a takeaway because you can combo it with the Xin Zhao. It's really effective. It's something Tarzan can obviously use to just win out those early skirmishes. Ultimately, for me, I think the game plan has to be for TT. Xiaopeng has to be able to find that impact. You want a jungler where you have ideally a clear speed advantage that you can uh, obviously have a bit of a tempo advantage against Tarzan because like we said, LNG's early game isn't their strongest point. They are still going to be good there, but if TT are going to find an advantage, that's where it needs to be. And I think mid lane's a vital aspect as well because we have Yeah, and he's been providing quite a bit for a team for the team. And picking a Karma up here, I expect this to go mid. It's obviously a flex, but it would provide that, that priority, which is so important for the junglers. Yeah, another option for that is alongside the Senna. We have seen Senna Karma. We've seen um, Karma Ezreal as well as bot lanes. So you can run like a very safe bot lane if you do choose to flex that down into the bottom side of the map. It's going to be the Xin Zhao and a Nautilus. This is a weirdly high priority on Nautilus recently, Dan. Yeah, I think it really helps out in those skirmishes because you can instantly just take out a high priority target uh, with the ultimate. Good at shutting, shutting enemies down. And I think with a lot of nerfs coming to the other uh, melee supports like Leona, just gradual power reduction, he's started to step up and feel pretty comfortable. Not really much of a surprise to see Tarzan on the Xin Zhao, but this does potentially set up a window for Xiao Peng uh, because it's not the fastest clear in jungler. Very good at skirmishing, but it's a little bit slower in that clear department. So it does open up a window for the side of TT here. And I expect they're going to prioritize a jungler in this first rotation. Nidley makes a lot of sense. It's something that Xiaopong's had a lot of success on and also will be able to outpace in that clear aspect. So it's it's finding oh, yeah. those windows where you're going to have that advantage. And look how cohesive this composition is so far for TT, right? Lots and lots of poke, lots and lots of long range. <laughs> and LNG are like, oh, you, you, you want to play this slow? You want to play poke at long range? Well, we're going Callista. We got a Zidzat. We got a Nautilus. We are going to run at you. Two dramatically different identities for these two teams so far. And I do just want to quickly make a bit of a PSA in case anyone doesn't know. Hex Flash is back. We're on 11.12 here. So the Nautilus will have Hex Flash. It is kind of a, a full strength hard engaged support there for the side of LNG. Yeah, and I mean, already look at these compositions. As you said, TT want to maintain their distance. They want to be able to apply that poke. Whereas for LNG, they have so much gear mission powers already. They want to be finding those aggressive engages and starting the fight off. But I kind of interested in what happens with TT with regards to solo laners. Obviously, I think at this point with the Ezreal, they could be quite happy at just having the Karma bot lane. But you want something with some hard CC that can set up the Nidley. Typically, the pairing we see is that Renekton, but obviously that's already been banned. So interest to see what alternatives we do see that uh set band away which could have been a good option as an alternative yeah it feels like two top laners getting taken away that do well at, at playing towards the weak side right with your set and your wukong um it's going to be the rise taken away from icon as well what do you expect for our solo laners here because it's mid and top or very likely mid and top for both teams here that I feel like the big ones that are still left open is uh, the Gwen and the Viego are still available and both really powerful. It essentially functions as a flex as well. Typically would expect to see this in the top lane, but you could flex it down. But Arle has been an absolute monster on this champion and it's super powerful. Again, leaning into skirmishes. And on top of that, the poke doesn't have that much effectiveness against the Gwen because obviously your W can just render it uh, irrelevant. And I think the, the huge amount of value of the Gwen pick here is that you're quite happy to go for that planet. You've already banned the Lee Sin, this set, the Wukong. In fact, look look at the bans from LNG. It is five top lane bans, and sure, some of them can be flexed to mid, but realistically, those are five top lane bans, and it just means Ally can go for this Gwen pick completely blind and give Icon the counter pick mid as well. So you you can essentially win every lane. But I will say the volley bear coming through for uh, Longsheng, that actually sets up the Nidalee really well. You can stun someone with that point and click stun on the Q. The Nidalee can land the spear afterwards. And actually, assuming that Ale is going to be going without flash, as we've typically seen Gwen's do, he's going to be an easy target to dive. So we have a lane that Xiaopeng, Xiaopeng has recently been playing through that he can look to execute on. And then when it leans into those uh, later skirmishes, you have the Viego who's really strong. And the round out is going to come through with the Zoe from Icon. 
So looking to contest that priority in the mid lane, which I think looking at the draft so far, it is pretty important. We talked about that mid jungle duo of Tarzan and Icon. They need priority for Tarzan, so he's able to apply that pressure outside. Because right now, top lane, the Volley Bear is going to be able to show quite capably after he gets a couple of levels. Obviously, level one really strong for Gwen. But bot lane as well, there's a lot of uh, shoving power from the side of TT. So this Zoe really bailing Tarzan out and providing some priority. And it does feel like we have a bit of a different identity to what than what we're used to here from LNG, right? With this Callista in the bottom side that we have seen from Light before. But when we were looking statistically, Dragon Control fairly low in the early game. That's something that they pick up much more in the mid game. With this kind of composition with a Zoe move with a Callista Nautilus bot and a Zin Zhao, it does feel like LNG can actually play towards that bottom side and try and stack the Dragons early on. Yeah, and I think when you look at what not only TT are looking to do with this composition, but also what they've been doing in the last couple of series, they have been playing towards the top side. And as we saw in the, the clips before the game, it kind of left that bot lane open to dry, uh, dry. We saw those four man dives in the bot side. This composition looks to be so good at that. You have the Zoe shove in, rotate down with the Xin Zhao, and it's a very easy dive to pull off. And the thing is, even if the Nidalee ends up ahead on the top side, it doesn't matter if your bot lane's collapsed. And this kind of goes back to the spinning plates thing for Xiaopeng. I'm not sure he's going to be able to find enough an advantage to mitigate what LNG will do in the bot lane. It's the kind of situation as well a lot of the time where Xiaopeng is going to be on this Nidalee. He is a specialist on this Nidalee. He's really, really solid on the champion. But there's an extent to which what, how much can you really achieve when it's like, yeah, you're going to be able to invade the red buff maybe, take that away, take away some Raptors. You, look, you press tab and you see that your bot lane has died. Maybe mid rotated down and also died. Like by the time you finish taking those camps, it's it's all set on fire on the other side of the map. We'll have to wait and see though. I don't want to count the chickens before they have hatched here. TT gonna be coming in looking for their first win in the LPL. So far, they have yet to get a singular game for themselves. So it's important for them. I mean, like, let's take it game by game for TT. I'm not even going to talk about them trying to win the series against LNG. Just even if they could win a single game, it would be a huge achievement for TT here. Because this is first versus 17th, guys. I don't want to paint it any other way. This is very much a David versus Goliath story. Yeah, absolutely is. And that's the fact is it's not just TT haven't won a series. They haven't won a single game. So even if, they w if this wasn't the first place team, getting a game would still be an upgrade from that. But taking one off LNG would obviously be absolutely massive. So let's let's start this one off then, Dan, by looking at our junglers. Because we've got... Yeah. We've been complimenting Xiaopeng all morning so far. As actually a hook comes in from i and already. Very nice, aggressive trades on this bottom side from LNG. But yeah, we've been complimenting Xiaopeng a lot. Tarzan is no slouch. Let's be honest, Tarzan is having... An amazing split for himself so far. He's on the Zin Zhao. It feels like he can be very aggressive. He's pathing up towards the top side, and it's the opposite for Xiaopeng. Yeah, and I think right now with the early priority from Ale in the top lane that you typically expect... Oh, taking a bit of a rough trade, but usually Gwen has a good level one, so you tend to find priority initially. Wait, but actually, uh, yes, I'm saying this. Okay. Uh, that okay. is... Yeah, a little bit of a disaster... Oh and... no! Oh god, it's all falling apart already! <laughs> this is meant to be a mid-game team! They're meant to yeah. win in the mid-game fights, not just kill you at level two! That that's not a good start. Let's be honest. You know, we we, we spent so much time <laughs> you know, setting up, you know, this is the game plan, this is what they can do. Shaofong doesn't even get a finish as full clear oh, and all of it. No. Oh no! It, I, it's oh, getting worse. No. Xiaofeng, he's pressing tap. He's looking at the three lanes. Two of them are now losing and lunching. He's desperate to push this in. Look how far up he is. Ale, you just got to look juicy here, mate. Look juicy. Bait him in. The bear wants it. Tarzan's happy oh. to wait as well, apparently. We'll walk over yeah. reward here. Lunching will spot you know, and I got to say, credit to Longxing in this situation, because one of the things he did quite a bit was set himself up in these bad scenarios where he gets caught out. A lot of restraint there, but yeah. I mean, the level one of Callista Nautilus is super threatening, but not respecting the level two. You could have just flashed so much sooner and you would have survived there. And then in the top lane, this wasn't really necessarily a misplay. I'd say from, yeah, this was just Icon being on fire. Found that window, confident with the flash, connects the sleepy trouble bubble, and... Uh, it's a rough start. It's a rough start, but you just got to reset. Be like, okay, where do we go from here? 
Take it game by game. Here we go. 2v2 in the mid lane. Icon gets the bubble across. Tarzan getting pretty low to Yet, though. That's a duel that Yet's happily going to win. Icon's just like, you're on your own, buddy. I'm going back to the mid wave. We're just going to sacrifice the chickens on this one. So a good little win here for T2. Yeah, finding some pressure. And yeah, now he's sort of hit a couple more levels. He's actually able to uh, find priority in the mid lane and contest Icon. Ale not actually having the best time in this matchup against Volibear as well. So oh. definitely feels like Xiaopong is leaning towards the top side. And if this spear hits, I think you have to wait for the wave to push in just because obviously uh, the Gwen can use her W to block away the spear. But we'll keep it in. Oh, no, it next. hit. Xiaopong surely gets a kill here. W should be available for Ale. They're going to try and make the dive happen. Lunching coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I like how you set it up and he just walks over. Yeah, you, you're gone. <laughs> he just tortured him. Oh, I thought he was going to press W. I thought he was he had flash. <laughs> yeah. I guess he just gave up. <laughs> yeah, I think once you take the spear there, I think it's, it's pretty over. I think you were too low to sort of defend. Do you see bot lane in a bit of a difficult situation? And it's it's that dynamic we talked about. You can see Xiaopong actually doing pretty well on the top side of the map, but I am starting to feel a bit concerned. No flash or patch means it's really difficult for him to walk up. And if you're not able to poke down your lane opponents as this karma as your lane, then you're not really applying much pressure. And this is now freed up. I want the he's pairing up with Tarzan. This is something that I really like to see from him. He's quite proactive in this sense. And this essentially means Xiaopong has just cleared this top side jungle of Tarzan. And Ooh. he's forced into a map split because his bot side is being stolen away. Icon is destroying, yeah, in this matchup. Like, the creative paddle stars, like, shooting them forwards through the wave to be able to get a good angle onto him. Manages to get a really nice bubble there. Like, Icon is absolutely destroying in the 1v1. Xiaopong waiting in the wings, though. He's trying to bait this up. I don't think Icon's really going to try and go for a dive. He doesn't have that much mana to work with, so I don't think anything's going to come with this one in the end, Dan. Let's quickly reset, though, and talk about what the game plan is right here, because we originally set up kind of some win conditions for the two teams, and then we just had shenanigans in the lanes. Drake has come up onto the map. We were talking about this Callista. Are you still feeling like LNG are very much a favorite to push for Drake's? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they can look to secure this one pretty easily. Bot lane, as much as Sandy and Passive kind of stabilize, they aren't really offering any pressure. I feel like Tarzan can, whenever he wants, just go over and take that dragon, especially as mid-priority is so much in their favor. And really for Xiaofeng, you found a pretty significant farm advantage. Top lane is in a good spot. I think you just repeat what you've been doing. Play towards that top side, get control of the area. Ideally, when the Herald spawns, you can be in a position just to take that one, and then you play for the gold lead and not necessarily the dragon lead. Because I think with TT, you want to take things one step at a one step at a time, get that gold advantage, and look to see what you can do with it. Because ultimately, I think if you start thinking too deep into the game, you'll just get distracted. And I think it's perfectly possible for Xiaopeng to play through that top side, right? Lansheng actually looking really good in this 1v1 so far, having lots of pressure onto Ale. They managed to get the kill on the dive earlier on. So it does feel like there is a lane that Xiaopeng can play through. Feels like, as you're rightly saying, Herald would be towards that lane. They could set that up, slam it onto the tower, try and finish the first tower off. That feels like actually a really good win condition potentially for the squad of TT. The question is, what do they lose on the other side of the map? As that was actually Heartbreaker used just to survive in the mid lane. Icon is just layering the pressure on. But I'm concerned, Dan, because one thing we talked about in the pregame was, okay, well, Xiaopong is trying to juggle these plates, right? If he does try and go up for Herald, tries to make plays topside, what does he lose elsewhere? Icon's in trouble. In we go. Flash away from Icon. Tarzan re-engaging onto Xiaopong. He has to back away Spear. It's a good one, but dodged by Icon. Yeah, Xiaopong is showing his strength in this situation. A level up on Tarzan and able to win out in these skirmishes. Just to bounce back on what you're saying, I feel like if the Herald isn't going in favor of LNG, if they're only taking dragons and you're able to defend your bot lane, potentially with the TP, well, I mean, as I say that, we just see long term losing. But as long as we're not losing too much on the bot side, I'm not overly concerned. But actually, looks like TT have decided to put their put their pressure towards bot lane and aren't actually prioritizing their heralds yet. I'm not sure how I feel about this decision because I feel like the dragon, as much as you can play for that soul wing condition, you're going to have to contest LNG in the mid game to get that. And we, we've seen how good LNG can perform those mid game teams fight so i'm not entirely convinced by going for 
the dragon instead of the herald especially when despite the fact that xiaopeng's had a good early game you're still overall down in gold yeah and my question then has to be where's tarzan going with the herald because with how well icon's been doing it could be in that mid lane that they slam it try and get the mid tier one but also down to the bot side got a callista if you can get a massive chunk of gold onto a callista in the early game finish that tower off it's real easy to just take over the rest of the game from that point patch and sam d they're gonna have to be a little bit nervous on this one but it looks like resets coming on through for now tarzan is up on the top side of the map and lng gonna go back to farming things up feels like a good start for lng but ultimately tt not falling too far Ooh. behind spear in onto icon he's in trouble here does get a w flash but he's taken down in the end by Xiaopeng. yeah really nice play icon's been consistently finding priority in this lane but Xiaopeng comes in manages to find the kill onto him and it gives a little bit of reprieve to, to yeah who's able to get that assist and the thing is you know we talked a lot about lng's slower early game and you're kind of seeing it here because we saw patch lose flash in that early uh in that early 2v2 and then we saw the transition come out uh sorry we didn't see the transition come out to punish that and it's allowed windows like this where xiaopeng could just do what he wants on the map you know we were talking about the spinning plates i haven't heard any uh sort of crack come out yet bot lane's still doing okay i feel like lng should have capitalized on that lack of flash should have looked to dive you have a nautilus callista so the fact that they've kind of just left things unscathed i think tt are handling the city game fine oh face call over the wall but xiao pong i don't know if he heard it i don't know what happened it doesn't matter because it's nautilus he will go down but that was very creative i was thinking hex flash i was thinking flash but why bother you've got a callista yeah, I really like the play. I like the move coming out from my Wandry and Tarzan. This pairing works with really well. I do think that against another team, the fact that they've taken so long to do this could be punishing. But ultimately, TT haven't built too much of an advantage. And now is where things start to get difficult for the spot lane because you see that red side jungle, complete vision control, and they have actually started to threaten mm -hmm. Yeah in the mid lane. Harold going to get thrown down. This how is going to be so low. Exactly. We were asking which tower they were going to try and focus on. With the Herald, it is going to be that mid lane. One plate remaining. Yeah, really struggling in that one as Patch. Just has to back away. Although, actually, maybe it's Iwandi in trouble. Dredge line back out to safety here. Can't contest for the control ward. So, Xiaopeng and Patch will be able to clear that one away. As Light is just turbo pushing in the bottom side, trying to clear that, trying to push it in as fast as possible. And potentially get a reset off for himself. Drake coming up though in two minutes time, Orcs. Does feel like LNG, even though they forewent the first one to get themselves a Herald, perhaps that could be a target for them as LNG might have overpushed in this bottom side here. Light having to use the heal for the speed, but he doesn't actually get it anyway. Flashes away from the ulti. Iwandi onto the wall. Has flash available himself as well. Dodges the spear. Oh, and now a TP to turn things around. It's a perfect max range hook onto Xiao Pong. And a stopwatch to bait it on top of everything. LNG played this perfectly. And now TT trying to get themselves under the tower. They should be able to escape, but just baited and outsmarted. Just a bit of an overforce there from the side of TT. They didn't have the teleports to follow up. They only had Yez, and they get outmatched in that. And then the stopwatch as well. Really nice my Wandi just to bait Xiaopeng in. And then he ends up going down. And this Nidalee had the good early start, but it starts to flop a little bit. Haven't seen any more pressure apply top lane. And then that last play in the bot side ends up backfiring. So LNG starting to pull ahead pretty significantly now. And I think in this one, the thought process is, okay, we connected the root onto the cluster, but Iwandi does a brilliant job of blocking all that damage. And then in this moment here, as soon as TP connects, Xiaopeng goes, okay, I'm not getting out here. I've been caught by a hook, so I just have to go in. The stopwatch timed perfectly, so there's no turnaround kill. And then off the top of all of that, Icon gets to finish the tower mid. Yeah, teleport to the bot lane and Icon's playing Zoe. So he gets to get that TP off the floor, gets a free reset, gets the TP back into the mid lane. So he gets to take a tower, he gets a 20 CS lead and he still gets the same reset as yeah. So loses no tempo for not roaming. So unbelievably um, fortunate play there coming out from LNG. 4-2 to two on the scoreboard now, but a 3,000 gold lead. Having a 3k yeah. gold lead when only two kills up is really exceptional. So Icon tanks a spear to the face. That hurts. Yeah, it definitely does, and you have to be wary of that poke coming in, but... Oh. Oh. 
Okay. I'm wishing trying to find the play there, but isn't able to connect. But as I was saying, the poke hurts a lot from the Nidley, but I think Icon can definitely offer the same in reverse, and they have to be a little bit concerned about that. You can see they're trying to fire over the wall here, but there's no way they can move in on this and contest it. They're too far behind. The skirmishing power too strong from LNG, and Icon fishing in this situation. I think TT should just back off now. Yeah, he's toying with the idea. Oh, no. As he does manage to get a sleep coming on through the hook. He's there and instantly patch is gone. Fight coming out from TT, though. They want to contest Shapon. Getting onto the back line. Icon escapes. Tarzan with a lot of healing, but will go down here. LNG have to back away from this one. They are still three strong. If I1D wants to try and find a hook, and Ale is about to arrive in the mid lane. Sam D's got to be careful, as does Yeah. Looks like TT will back off. The Herald is spawning. And, you know, it actually looked good for a moment there in the fight, but overall, it's still a two-for-one trade in favor of LNG. They still just secure the dragon as well, and it feels like Xiaopong just jumping in a bit too aggressively here. Died three times now in this game so far, despite like a daily start, and already Tarzan's able to catch up. So, we see the replay, Pat, just, I don't know why you're there. You overstep, you get caught out. But it's this moment here where the true shot barrage comes across, where it actually looks yeah. pretty good, but then... Xiaofeng just over aggressive, getting way too close to Xin Zhao, and Tarzan's able to turn it around and create space for the rest of the team to disengage. Yeah, really good effort there from TT, but unfortunately not quite enough. But if in doubt, build Divine Sundra. That's TT's motto right now. And as soon as I mention the items, of course, uh, it does get blocked by a graphic. But there we go. Look, three Divine Sundra. Thunderers across the scoreboard. It's got to get. Never mind. But <laughs> they also have a Night Harvester there for Xiaofeng. Um, a lot of Mythics coming on through. This does feel like TT are spiking, at least short term here, and maybe could find an opportunity. But it doesn't look like they're interested in trying to fight for the Herald here. Tower will go down. This would be a Herald for LNG as well. As TT try and trade it on the bottom side of the map, but trading a tier one for a tier one when there's a Herald in the equation as well doesn't feel as even. Yeah, it's not super favorable. But as much as the Divine Sundras are these great spikes, the item's really strong right now. Similarly for LNG, they have really strong one item spikes. The Ludens on the Zoe gives a ton of burst. They have the Rift Maker, so RLA just has a lot of survivability and skirmishing power. And on top of that, Light uh, with the uh, Shield Bow, sorry, a lot of sustain. And then he's going to hit a similar power curve compared to Ezreal. That's one of the big things is that we typically see a lot of AD carries. The crit ones looking towards those three items, but Callista, two items is a great spike, similar to that Ezreal with the Mana Moon Divine Sundra. When you have that Runans, you're going to be ready to fight, ready to sort of look for those skirmishes. Does feel like Callista is one of those champions as well. That uh, even if other AD carries spike, I feel like Callista has some of the biggest spikes out of all early game AD carries. Yeah. Like comparable to like Samira as well, where when you hit two items, you're just so far and away stronger than other AD carries in the game that it, it just gets really terrifying. Every single time we pan up to the top lane and Ale has dropped his W, it kind of looks like a Kenanul in my eyes. And I'm instantly like, oh, there's an all-in. No, no, it's just Gwen W. There isn't even a Kennen in the game, but my brain is like programmed at this point to get excited when I see Kennen ult. And I feel like I've got a Pavlovian response going on there. Um, one other random thing I do just want to quickly mention is you see Icon has heal right now. I'm not sure if he has heal or not, but there is currently a bug with Zoe where after you've used your Spell Thief spell, the Icon will still remain above your head until you get a different Spell Thief spell. So... Just bear in mind, if you see Icon die and it feels weird that he didn't use his spell, it's very possible he didn't have it. Well, sleepy Trouble Bubble connects, but it's going to use the Rift Trial to get this tower down. And LNG doing a really good job of applying this pressure, grouping up, establishing the vision. And you actually see, if you look at the minimap, they already sort of cornered out that square of the map, established the vision pretty deep. And the thing is, there's no one on TT who can really face check when uh, Longxing's not in the area. And that's one of the problems with having these enchanted supports like Karma. If you have something like Nautilus, particularly if you have a Callista to back it up with the Fate's Call, then you're a lot more comfortable pushing in, stepping up, looking to establish this vision. Uh, you have the Xin Zhao as well, but for TT, Nidalee doesn't really want to be face checking and neither does the Karma. So once an area of the map is established by LNG, it's very hard for TT to reclaim it. Yeah, TT, they have lost control of the map at this point. It does feel like if LNG want to push in, they can. And it's down to TT to 
make the play to stop that happening. It's the, the onus is on TT here to fight to reclaim control because Drake is up in 15 seconds here. Dan, what do we need to be looking out for in the ensuing fight? I think the big thing is oh. looking out for the engage from LNG Ooh. and looking at Sam D because I think right now he's in a pretty good spot. I think Yer's in a pretty good spot. These carries need to stay alive, and I think LNG's goal is to shut them down as soon as possible. Hook comes in. Iwandi on the front line does have Aftershock in immediately. Yeah, he's just rendered. And that feels like a little bit of lore satisfaction there with Viego going down to Callista, the spirit of vengeance, as Patch flashes away. We'll be able to get out with his life here. Icon can't quite close the gap. It's going to be another kill going the way of LNG. I think TT rightly disengaging from that point to try and stop the bleeding. Yeah, it's only second dragon. Oh, they're looking for engage. Oh, hang on. Light's gone too far forward. Does have a bit of life still, but not enough to deal with the bear. Lunching wants this game for himself as he pushes for more. Trying to chase Tarzan out of the jungle now as he dashes over towards the blue buff. Lunching can't quite close the gap. The lightning comes down. No stun available, and Tarzan walks out. And I've got to give credit. I've been pretty critical of Longsheng for a lot of mistakes during the laner phase that have put him on the back foot. But this game, he's held up pretty well. We didn't see Xiaopeng necessarily camping that heavily. He did give him some attention. But he's held up well in lane. He was applying pressure in Arle. And then this team fight finding a great window onto Light. So credit to him for stepping up in this one. And actually, I thought that dragon was basically gone. But they're actually able to secure yeah. it on the back of that fight. And especially off the pick from on, on yeah earlier on, it feels like LNG just simply didn't respect it like i don't know why yeah. light is the one to walk into three people just get stunned and speared and sam d i mean i don't know what he expected it's that element of overconfidence and the thing is when you look at some of the carries on the side of tt the ezreal who with his new build scales really well and the viego who is a monster in the later stages i think you have to be a little bit cautious you're still at a gold lead you're still lng i'm still confident in them but you shouldn't be making those mistakes and giving TT any windows realistically. Yeah, a, a lot of it is, it's not necessarily about like, oh, suddenly TT are in control of this game just yet. Like there's still a long way to go for TT if they want to get in control. But it is like, when we're looking at LNG, when we're talking, the, the conversation around LNG right now is, is this the best team in the league? Is the first place in the standings representative of what we're going to be seeing by the end of this split. That's the big piece of conversation that's going on right now. And when you're against teams like TT, just walking up, disrespecting, dying for no reason, losing parts of your lead, it's not a good look for LNG. It feels like feels like they're very overconfident and getting a little bit sloppy in this game as Tier 2 will be taken down in the mid lane. Ale does take a W from Ezreal. That sleepy trouble bubble, though, is going to disengage everything. Nicely done there by Icon. And I think the thing is, the expectation for this series is it's a 2-0 stomp for LNG. And it's a quick one. Like, 25-minute games back-to-back -back based on what we've seen so far. And even now, even the fact that LNG are ahead, I think TT are holding up pretty okay so far. This doesn't look like it's going to end in the next three minutes. And the expectation, obviously, are pretty high on LNG. So anything yeah. less than that, and you're kind of asking questions, like, are these mistakes, are these errors something that could be exploited by the other teams in the league, even if TT aren't necessarily the ones who are able to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do want to like kind of temper what we're saying here with like, like, I get it. I've cast the LPL for a bit now. When the top teams play against the bottom teams, they don't necessarily take those series always super seriously. Um, top esports, IG. I'm looking at you, but at, at the same time, this is like pleasant to see from tt at least they are contesting at least they are trying to fight at least they're not like I, i've seen series in the lpl where it really didn't feel like the underdog was uh feeling like they could win feels like tt are really fighting for a win here and, and looking for these opportunities yeah leading the charge on this one as he goes towards iwandi uh, but he won't be able to find the engage still two minutes until that next drake and it does feel like lng not going to be able to go for for a super fast win uh Lanxing, my guy you do not have a team with you. Has to back away, has to use the ult defensively. A little bit of an overstep to say the least. Yeah, fortunately, it's still two minutes till our next dragon spawns. You will have your ult back up by that point. Uh, a little bit over aggressive though. Didn't have the support of the team. Thought he had found Tarzan. But I think ultimately the, the main thing to focus on from this game is to kind of hone back in on what we set up initially was that Xiaopeng was the, the big sort of driving force and his lanes are kind of falling apart. That hasn't happened yet. Even after that atrocious level two, bot lane's been okay. 
mid lane's been yeah. for the most part uh, even though icon did kind of smash him but he's held up fine and top lane we've actually seen long shing look good and so it puts them in a spot where when we get to this mid game they they aren't that far yeah. behind in gold that they can't contest there's definitely a gap but there's windows if they find a good team fight and you mentioned the mid lane. It felt like Xiao Pong tried his best to win that mid lane, right? We saw so many ganks on towards him. Ally in trouble as Lan Xing tries to force an engage here. I want to quickly bring up a question with you, Orcs, because we're yep. beyond the 20 minute mark. We're in the LPL. Barons can happen at any given moment here. And we have a Kalista in the game. Kalista always known for being able to really threaten on those kinds of objectives. Do you, do you think LNG? could look towards threatening a Baron. Obviously, maybe not right now since Drake's coming up in 45 seconds, but feels to me like they are strong enough with three items on a Kalista, with two items on a Zoe. Feels like you're strong enough to threaten the idea. Yeah, I think the thing is they can clear the vision out so effectively and they don't even need to start Baron as long as there's the threat that they're doing it. Because the thing with the Kalista, if you come to the Baron late, it's so hard to steal it away because you have all the, uh, you have all the Ren stacked up. And so someone from TT has to face check. And again, I ask who, because I think anyone is going to have a bit of a rough time if you're face checking into, you know, the sleepy trouble bubble, the potential engage from a Nautilus. So I think after this next dragon, we could see them move that vision towards the top side, establish control, and then they're forced to face check. And actually already, if you look on that boss side of the map, really strong vision from, from LNG. This is kind of what you expect. And it means that TT aren't even able to contest. They're not going anywhere near that dragon because there's no way for them to push in and try and contest that vision without face checking and it's so dangerous to do so from lng it doesn't even come down to the team fights it's just the control they have sam d blasts an all over towards the drake unfortunately misses that one i will say he was aiming for where drake is usually pulled out to so i don't think that's something we can be too critical of as icon looking for a bubble won't find anyone at least for now We'll have to back away again. But once again, with this Callista, once they get some vision control for themselves, they, they can potentially threaten that. And you can see Lunching down on the bottom side right now does have TP available. But ultimately, even if you kind of ignore him, he is a Volibear. Bear. And if you could get the Baron, I think that would be a worthy trade. We will see the respect coming on through. You'll see Ale recalling. He'll head down towards that bot side himself and try and collect this wave. In fact, looks like it's going to be Icon to get this wave instead just to make sure that that xp and that gold doesn't get away yeah and i don't think there's too much of a threat necessarily of tt doing anything with this pressure they have started to contest some of that vision but now the resets are coming in and this is where we look to see lng start to push out and gain control and just close off that area of the map one of the critical things here is because both uh, mid tier one and tier two are down for tt you have to think of it like safety zones you know inside the base where there's those inhibitor towers that's very much a safety zone but then they don't have very much outside of the base from there until the baron and if there's a long that, area that can sort of be contested and controlled it's really hard to traverse that quickly so we'll call that the danger zone okay oh yeah and and yeah, lanshing he's gonna be the one that has to face check he's maverick in this situation you know okay, and sometimes okay. sometimes you gotta get on the highway to the danger zone yeah is treading in the danger zone right now. He's got to be cautious. He can turn invisible, though. And arguably, if a fighter jet goes fast enough, it's kind of invisible. <laughs> no, maybe not. It, it sound is invisible for a second because it goes faster. Um, close like your eyes, trying to pressure it's invisible. Bottom side. <laughs> Say that again. If you close your eyes, it's invisible. You know, let's work with that That's one. True. That's true. Uh... <laughs> it doesn't even exist. If I can't see it, it can't see me. Those are the rules. That's the rules of the universe. Um, as we have a dive on the top side, yeah, realizes what's up, dashes away, but this will be a tier two taken by LNG. And I just want to, I want to take a moment here because it doesn't feel like we're going to have much action going off. Although I say that, TT in a bit of a pre precarious position here as they're trying to push up mid lane here. Ali on the flank, Shao Pong dashing away back into the jungle. Tarzan will clear vision. I am very surprised that LNG aren't trying to threaten Baron. It feels like they're a little nervous to go for that objective. I, th I think the reason is, if you're in the Baron pit, your health bars start getting low. Things like a True, sh true Shot Barrage and a Nilly Spear Mystic Shot, really easy to hit when you're sort of corralled into that pit. And that's realistically where LNG could actually throw the game. 
So I don't think you actually need to risk starting the Baron. I think the thing is you want to threaten it and have a good amount of vision control. But we saw that lean towards the top side so TT could push up a contest vision. It's been very much a back and forth. And honestly, TT are doing a good job of not overstepping. Tarzan could be in trouble here. Has a stopwatch though and Lanxing tanking up on the front line, but he's literally 1v5. Needlework across the team's ally. Dives in onto everybody. Doesn't have a stopwatch available, but oh, in fact, he does. He's completely fine. LNG, five members strong. Huge damage out from Icon. That is disgusting. Flash over the wall onto Sam D, who jumps away from that one. Doesn't quite, quite hit by the Paddle Star. Resets across the board here for TT. And it looks like LNG once again just looking to control vision, not looking to start the Baron off. Yeah, and again, I respect this decision to play it safe. As much as there are strong scaling elements on TT, I don't think you're too worried about this going later. But if you throw a Baron, that is really what could throw this game towards the side of TT. So just play it slow. Wait until you find an actual advantage in the team fight. Because there, it looked close. And with the amount of damage flying around, you'd think someone would have gone down. But no one quite able to be found. And the shift of attention is kind of moving down towards bot lane once again. Because Dragon is spawning yeah. in 40 seconds. Both team would put themselves in soul point and be one away. And it is an Infernal Soul. And you have, you okay. know, Nidalee's, Ezreal, Zoe's. Infernal yeah. Soul, very valuable here. So I feel like it's it's the moment. 30 seconds before this Drake fight. What do we need to see from TT? If they want to get control of this game, if they want to try and get the Drake, how does it happen for TT? I think a more extended fight where Sam D and Yeah can get a lot of value and maintain a good amount of distance. The last fight we saw at Dragon, we saw LNG instantly delete Yeah and then TT had to back away. These carries actually have a lot of power right now. They just need to be able to survive and get that value out. The problem is I'm looking towards light on this Callista and he looks so strong right now. So play the range. Do not try and get in uh, up close and personal because light will oh. tight. We've got spear on spear action between the two junglers here as the rest of the fight kicks off from Lanxing. Just not tanky enough. Tarzan jumps in. There's a root coming through as well. Beautifully done as double kill comes through for Ale. And unfortunately, it's a little bit disjointed from TT. Xiaopong is forced away by Ale as Lang Xin goes on to the rest of the team. And it feels like there just wasn't any follow-up. It just feels like you don't need to necessarily look for that engage from TT. These tight skirmishes really benefit LNG. Oh, and no. oh, you're gone. Bubble comes through onto Tarzan. Oh my days. Icon with three items. That's a rise of focus right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that item does. Yeah, and oh, I, no. I mean, yeah. it's just all He's starting gone. to fall apart now. The fight was bad, but now LNG chaining kills together on the back of that. And I think. You were talking a lot about the Baron, Joe. This is probably the window that you're looking for. You can see the vision kind of already swept out on that top side. And Icon is just playing disruption here, stopping anyone from getting close. And this is Zoe's playground, right? Board. Where you can just throw your bubbles out, throw your paddle stars out. Yeah, there's one ward vaguely nearby, but it's just not going to matter at all. They're going to be able to spot it and... Whew. <laughs> Actually, kind of did matter. Sam D with a valiant <laughs> effort there. Against a Callista, Anderson's out. It's still nearly got the steal out. Yeah, so this fight opens up, and you can see in the situation, Longshin ends up getting engaged on. The fight is very tight, and these skill shots aren't finding much value because the front line are just absorbing them. And instantly, the, the, the kills are chained together. I think TT need to be using their range for these team fights. They need to be finding a bit more distance, and you can see... Great bubble comes in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? Where's the pro view? We get a view of him literally 100 to 0 ing <laughs> Shellfuck. He's like, yep. What a champion. Yeah, all skill, baby. All skill. I, I have to say, I've been spamming a lot of Zoe recently. That feels so good. When you get to the point where you can just one shot someone and they didn't build mercs, you're just like, <laughs> You land your bubble, you see it hit, and you just know that that kill's coming your way. A lot of counterplay, honestly. But, you know, Icon's been playing it well this game so far. From the laning phase, looking really solid. And providing a lot of pressure. Now, TT... Oh! Oh Fight. my oh god! My he didn't even have a bubble! What is that from Icon? He is taking over! He is angry for all the ganks that Xiaofeng threw his way during the early stages of the game, and he wants a little bit of vengeance for himself as we move 
towards the bottom side. This will be an in hit take. And Tarzan's in the mid lane in the meantime. As Ale on the front line, happy to do so with his shroud. He's pretty safe. And this long owl team fight is not really going to work out for TT. We said they wanted longer fights. But not like this, Dan. Not like this. Now onto the next as they could go as Icon is on the front line and actually will survive somehow. I'm not entirely sure how he got away with that one, honestly. But it doesn't matter. It was a longer one than we expected. But at the end of the day, LNG take the first game. Yeah, and past the mid game, it just felt like LNG really came together and those team fights where we see them dominate were completely on point. Icon, an absolute monster, but the whole team knew exactly what they needed to do. And I think just the target selection was excellent. It felt like as soon as someone overstepped from TT, they just got deleted and then the follow-up was there and the fight was already over. And I, I honestly think that TT, credit to them, the early game went okay. Longxing in the top lane was fine. The bot lane held up okay, but it just, it didn't really matter. And it's kind of like, it goes back to what we said about them where there's more than one issue. So they did fix one there, but there's still so much more ground to be made if they're going to beat the number one team right now. Yeah, and it, it, it does feel like in a lot of those matchups in the laning phase, like Callista does exceptionally well into Ezreal. Zoe does exceptionally well into the Viego. It felt like you have the one winning lane up on the top side for TT, but even there, they weren't really able to leverage that advantage into anything significant. Once the Heralds and the Dragons start to go the way of LNG, it felt like control of the game just slowly but surely slipped away from TT. Then we got to these fights, and as you were saying during the game, when when you've lost control completely with this kind of composition it, long range compositions want to play on the objective they want to be there first and let the enemy have to try and push into them just kite away yep. when you're trying to push in with this kind of composition it just it never feels like it's going to work and the thing is, they, they couldn't even get too much value out of the poke because the fight would start, the front line is there, they're blocking all the Nidalee Spears yep. and the Ezreal Qs. They kill someone, and as soon as, you know, longxing has gone down or whoever else is, you know, in that other fight it was, yeah, it's like, okay, we're not winning this from this position. Our poke hasn't done much, and this is now running at us with a ton of momentum, and it's mm -hmm. like, it kind of just falls apart. Honestly, I think for game two, the early game was okay, but I think I would like to see like an easier composition to team fight with the side of TT because they can navigate early games okay, but as soon as it gets to that mid game, it feels like they start to fault and the team fights aren't going well. So give yourself some strong engage tools. Uh, I think we should see Patch put on like a melee support. And then when we get to the mid game, you want to have the brainless comp that just goes and just goes forward. And then it might have a chance. It's still a long shot, yeah. but I think that's probably the best way they can adapt from this. I think one of the one of the interesting things about this draft from TT is the fact that they prioritized the Karma Ezreal lane when the most recent series we saw from LNG was Light playing the Callista and Iwandi playing Hard Engage, which happens to do yeah. exceptionally well into Ezreal Karma, right? Being able to have the kill threat. Being, and obviously they didn't respect the level two, so they fell really far behind in that laning phase as well. But Callista typically does exceptionally well into these slower laning AD carries that want to scale up a bit. So does feel like perhaps need to go back to the drawing board, perhaps needed to do a little bit more research on what LNG have been doing recently and, and how to try and play against this one. It feels like TT was sort of Drafting in isolation for what's worked for them in scrims as opposed to drafting around what their opponent is likely to bring to the table. Yeah, and honestly, I'm personally not a massive fan of the Enchanter's support just because you have so much less freedom to go aggressive. A big thing for me is you saw that Tarzan I won pairing and it allows them to move together and sort of establish that control. Xiao Peng had a great early game. He's been really good for the team so far, but the Karma doesn't really offer too much to him. You know, we're talking about the things he had set up on top lane was great you have the point of click stone uh coming out from long Sheng, but the bot lane just wasn't a great lane to play around and when they did attempt it ended up backfiring and credit to Xiao Peng, he did a ton of damage here on the nidalee samdi as well but the problem is it's not effective damage you know you compare that to icon and the zoe his damage is 100 to 0 on the enemy team when you connect it onto a squishy carry but a lot of this damage coming out from TT was just fluff damage. You know, you're either hitting a frontliner or you're poking someone out only for them to back yeah. up and sustain. It, it wasn't sticking is the problem. And I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm thinking more about this draft from the side of LNG. And I actually think that the pick for Tarzan, Zin Zhao, was not just a pick for 
like prioritizing the Zins out. I think it was more of a takeaway from TT as well. Because when you think about that Karma first pick, obviously it's good for the Karma Ezreal if you think about bot lane in isolation. But actually, Enchanter plus Zin Zhao has been a theme we're seeing cropping up. We've seen a lot yep. of Lulu Zin Zhao coming through. Karma and Lulu kind of, in my mind, are the same category. So it feels like that Zin Zhao pick was also like a, hey, you don't get to play this composition that, that has been starting to crop up. And then you get the Nidalee that comes in, which does not have the same um, identity, I guess, as, as, as a Zin Zhao and, and the same influence on a composition. So unfortunately, Xiaopeng not really able to have the same influence that we would have hoped. Although Xiaopeng individually played well on that Nidalee, not trying to flame Xiaopeng, just felt like the composition wasn't as coherent as maybe TT were looking for. We're going to go into a quick break. Then we'll be back with game number two between TT and LNG. And we'll see if LNG will finish this one off as we expect. Or will the TT have more of their sleeves? 